just sound guy. <laughs> handheld. He's on handheld. It says HH on layer two. Everybody's learning about the sound console this morning. Everybody, thank you, Evan, back there for helping us out. Actually, use vessels. I'm just going to move over to, wait, oh, now there's a, a cord attached to me, so now i got to really stay back here. We'll get that figured out in just a second here, but hey, good morning. We are so glad that you are here today. Uh, it is a great morning here at The Way, uh, and uh, I'll always remind you, is this is if, if you have a heart for sound, uh, we need people in the sound area, and so when we don't have somebody there, things like this happen, and Stuart can't fix that from the back. So if you ever want to serve that area, talk to Stuart. But anyways, done with that announcement. Uh, let's all stand up right now, and let's just share uh, some Christmas joy this morning. We're in a series called Mer Merry and Bright, uh, and so share with each other what your favorite Christmas song is this morning. All right, why don't you go ahead and find a seat in there. And if anybody's out in the lobby, hopefully you guys are in here as well. Uh, if I haven't introduced myself or you don't know who I am yet, I'm Pastor John, the pastor here at The Way. Uh, and if you are a guest or new here with us today, we are so glad that you are visiting with us today. Make sure you take some time this morning to fill out a new here card, uh, drop it off out by the new here sign out there, and we've got a gift that we'd love to give you as well today. A couple announcements here before we get started this morning. Uh, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to everyone who came out for our first ever community Christmas and served with that. That was a awesome time. So many people came and just had a great time uh, as we got to be community together. Uh, thanks to all of those who served and gave their evening to uh, serve our community. Uh, we'll be doing that again next year, and we're excited that that all went well. Uh, Advent devotions are out in the lobbies the last week. They're going to be out there. Uh, it's not too late to start. Uh, you're only a week behind, so that's okay. Um, you can still grab one of those. Uh, those are in the bin at the info desk uh, on the way out there today. Um, also, uh, today is the last day uh, to bring food for the food drive, uh, uh, presents for the giving tree. That all ends today. Thank you to all those who grabbed uh, all of those uh, cards and, and ornaments off the tree. We also have another opportunity for you to serve someone today as well. On the other side of the New Here desk, you'll see a table set up with a bunch of Christmas cards. All of those Christmas cards are there for us to fill out uh, and send an encouraging message to those who are uh, in Mason Point uh, at home, a retirement home uh, out in town and country. A lot of people said, why that? Uh, because we have a pastor that's in our, our circuit and district that I know uh, that he's called to that community. Uh, him and I have a great relationship, and I asked him, hey, could we do this for you guys? And he was overjoyed uh, that our kids, that our people, that would, would take the time to write an encouraging Christmas message uh, to someone who maybe isn't going to have a great Christmas or is alone or even out there they have memory care and stuff like that where people can't remember uh, what day it is, and that card is an encouragement to them. So if you want to 
take five minutes today to grab one of those cards, fill it out, write an encouraging message on there, just write Merry Christmas, write a Bible verse on there, uh, you can put it in the box there. That will go a long way in sharing the joy of Jesus with someone, another brother and sister in Christ, uh, somewhere uh, this Christmas. And so uh, take some time to do that this morning. And finally... Christmas Eve, don't forget, Christmas Eve is on a Sunday this year, uh, and so there's a whole bunch of like, when's churches having uh, their Christmas Eve services? We are having ours at 2 and 4 p.m., 2 and 4 p.m. Uh, both those services will be inside. I know some in the past, so they're outside, no more, no more outside, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, and uh, they'll be the same service. Uh, we would love to have you for one or all of those. Uh, there are invites out there that you can grab and share with people. Uh, the Facebook uh, stuff is up if you want to share that event there, uh, tag friends, all that stuff. It's on our website as well, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to celebrating Christmas Eve with all of you and all of your friends and all of your family members. And so with that, as we get ready to worship today, just a reminder, if you want to give this morning, you can do that at the doors. On the way out, you can also do that online uh, and also text that as well. Usually there's a slide that comes up with all that stuff on it right there. Uh, thank you to those who continue uh, to bless uh, this, uh, this body and uh, all that goes on here. We, we as a church would not be able to do the things we do, things like Community Christmas, if it weren't for those of all of us who continue uh, to give of uh, our finances and trust God with that. Uh, and, and tithe and bring offerings to God. And so thank you to all who do that. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Stuart, and he's going to lead us into worship this morning. Well, let's stand together. This is Psalm 150, and as I read this, uh, I just want you all right now to repeat after me. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's say it again. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Father, we have come here this morning to worship you. We're excited and honored to be in your house. We love you, Lord. We invite you, Holy Spirit, right now to move. Come and move. Come and do what you want to do in this place. In Jesus' name. child is born, a son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. The Messiah, oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. We sing holy, holy, holy For unto us a child is born A son is given, a son is given For unto us a child is born A son is given, a son is given The Messiah Oh, to see him, to see him high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy.
Sing worthy of it all. You were the of it all. we give you praise we give you honor we ascribe glory to your name Jesus you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords open our hearts to see you in this room right now you are alive you are living father we're not going to rush past this moment your word calls us to sing. Your word calls us to ascribe the glory. Do your name. So come and move, Holy Spirit. Break off a spirit of religion. Break off a spirit of the fear of man. Fill us with the fear of the Lord. Fill us with the fear of the Lord, Holy Spirit. Give us eyes to see you moving right now in this room. You are here with us. Focus our hearts and our minds on you. 
couple things I got to say about that. First of all, when we sing that song on Christmas Eve, you all are hired, okay? You got some hips going up here and dancing. I love it. I hope I see y'all, you guys doing that on Christmas Eve when we sing Go Tell the Mountain. And I don't know what I like better. I love watching the kids, but I also love the fan section here, which is all the teachers going, oh, come on, we practice this. Let's go. Let's go. Follow me. It's always great to do. So, you guys did an awesome job. Thank you so much. I hope that all of us along with you can go and share that kind of joy and be that merry and that bright for the rest of the Christmas season and all year. Kids, thank you so much. They're going to head back to their classrooms right now. And you guys, parents, guardians, can pick them back up uh, after service today. They're going to go and have a fun time. And I think they're going to be making some ornaments or something today. Maybe that was a surprise I gave away. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. So, hey, we're going to transition into message time, okay? So what that means is if you uh, have a Bible, get your Bible out, we're going to be in what today? 
Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible and you want one, uh, we have them in the back. Just raise your hand. One of our hospitality members will get one and bring it to you. If you don't own a Bible, take that. It is yours. We want you to be in God's Word that much. Uh, Today, uh, we have Blake up here sharing a message today. Uh, If you don't know, we are a church that participates uh, in helping young guys, young men uh, who are in ministry or in school to become pastors. Uh, We're part of what's called Field Ed, and that gives them opportunity to be in our church setting, uh, to be part of a church, to be uh, in the culture of a church, and also get opportunity to practice and learn in a church. Uh, And so Blake is a first-year seminary student that actually has a wealth of preaching uh, experience because he uh, was doing that at a church up in Wisconsin for a while. Uh, And so uh, he's going to share a message today. And and as I just want to say about that... uh, Talk to him afterwards. Encourage him. Tell him, man, I really like that you shared that. Or I really thought that was awesome how you did that. Uh, and equally, if there's something that you're like, hey, here's something that I can encourage you in, do that. That's what we're called to do as a body is to help him to grow and become the best uh, pastor uh, that he can be uh, by the, the call of the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, Blake, we're excited for you to share. Uh, and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, as you talk about Luke 2 and the angels, right? And the That's right. Are, cool. All right. Well, let's watch this and then we'll start in a second. Very good. Yeah, so good morning. Uh, I didn't know until I got here today that the kids would sing, which means that grandparents and whatnot would be here. So uh, when you give me your comments afterwards, just be really nice, okay? Uh, No, just kidding. Uh, (laughs) But good morning. Uh, Yeah, today we're going to be in Luke 2. We're going to talk about the angels, and we're going to talk about uh, the famous words of Linus. Uh, from a Charlie Brown Christmas, giving glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. It's not necessarily how it is uh, in the Bible. Um, just that last phrase is just a little different. Um, but if you wouldn't mind praying with me for just a moment. Lord, thank you so much for today for a chance to be in your presence. We pray that your words indeed are spoken and your words are heard and your words are put into practice. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So who knows how many days until Christmas? Fifteen. I did not realize that until this morning. <laughs> uh, that is really quick. Um, and I'm curious, uh, where are you at in your Christmas decoration? Like either outside or inside. I'm sure many of you uh, burst down the door, right? You kicked it open on November 1st and you were screaming Mariah Carey and you were decorating your house. Is anyone willing to say that that was them? November 1st you decorated for Christmas? There's always one. Nice job, all right? There's always one. Uh, And that's okay. Um, Some people maybe are a little more patient or a little more reserved in their decorating. That's uh, my wife Hannah and I are like that. We didn't put our Christmas tree up until after Thanksgiving, and that is the only decoration in our house. Is anyone like that? Maybe you don't have a lot of decorations or you waited until after Thanksgiving. Yeah, okay, a little bit more. Are there any, is there anyone that doesn't have any decorations inside or outside? I think that's okay, too. Oh, no one? Everyone has at least a little bit. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, I have an interesting relationship with Christmas decorations, probably part of why Hannah and I only have a tree, uh, is when I was in high school, my family was really into decorating for Christmas. The inside of our house was like the North Pole. Uh, And then when I was a junior in high school, my older brother, my stepdad, and my mom Uh, wanted to go all out in decorating the outside of our house for Christmas. So my brother and my stepdad went to Menards, and they bought um, all all brand new bright white LED Christmas lights and one little box or strand of uh, bright multicolored LED Christmas lights. And they decided that they were going to put them literally everywhere on the outside of our house, on the eaves of our house, on every window of our house, Uh, My family has a wraparound deck that is the same square footage as the house, so it's huge. Put Christmas lights all around that. We have a garage that is is the same footprint. You could rebuild the house in the garage, uh, put it all around the eaves of that and all of the uh, windows of the garage. We have two big trees. One of them actually got cut down recently, but they had two big trees 
Christmas lights on those huge trees. Uh, we have a bush in our yard, in my parents' yard, I should say. It's not my house anymore. But uh, that was the only thing that could have like non-white lights. So my brother got to put the colored Christmas lights on there. Uh, and then that year for Christmas, my, my parents thought it would be a great idea to buy uh, four Christmas trees, one for inside, of course, and then three for outside that we put in four or uh, three corners of our deck, and those also had bright white LED Christmas lights. Um, and if you have ever seen National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, right, C- Clark Griswold's house, that was our house. Uh, it was very much merry and very much bright. And in North Wisconsin, where there is snow, uh, it, was, it was incredibly bright. Um, and so as we got to uh, Christmas time, my family was like, oh yeah, our lights, they certainly point people to Jesus, the light of the world, things like that. Uh, but as we got closer to Christmas break at school, uh, my friends and I were talking to our math teacher. His name was Mr. Moe. And Mr. Moe... Uh, we were at, he was recently married, he'd been married for about six months, and we were asking him uh, what uh, his Christmas traditions were like, what his Christmas plans were going to be like, uh, because he was recently married and those things change when you get married. Uh, and instead of telling us all about his Christmas traditions, he went on a tirade about someone a couple blocks down his street who had incredibly bright Christmas lights that were shining into his bedroom all night since Thanksgiving, and he barely slept. And my friends and I, a lot of you already know where this is going, right? <laughs> but my friends and I at the time, like juniors in high school, were like, oh, whose house could that be? What street do you live on? And he says, the street. And I'm sitting there in class, and I'm just like, that is my house, Mr. Moe. <laughs> I am so sorry. Uh, and he was like, hey, I'll pay you $20 a day if you turn the lights off after like 10 p.m. I didn't take him up on it. Maybe I should have. Uh, but yeah, our, my family thought that uh, our Christmas lights we're doing one thing. We thought they were pointing people to Jesus, right? That's all. All we had was Christmas lights. We didn't have like Santa Claus or reindeer or Frosty or snowman or anything like that out. Um, but they were driving my neighbor crazy and probably the other neighbors absolutely crazy. And I think that uh, that, that thought process of our Christmas decorations is a good place for us to start uh, this morning. And so I, I want you to, to wonder, to question, to ask yourself, what do your Christmas decorations, or maybe the lack of Christmas decorations at your house, show and tell others? Do they show that you love Jesus? Do they show that you know the true meaning of Christmas? Do they give glory to God in the highest, as we're going to talk about today? Or do they show and tell others that you love Santa Claus and reindeer and candy canes and snowmen? Now, I do need to say, I do not have a problem if you have, like, reindeer and Santa Claus, right, on your roof. Not a bad thing, okay? Hannah and I's Christmas tree is filled with, I guess, four type of ornaments. One is family heirloom ornaments. Uh, Those are in the minority. (laughs) And then they're filled with Santa Claus and Batman and the office ornaments, all right? So we celebrate, yeah, commercial Christmas, giving gifts, all those things. But... I think that it's an important place for us to start as we talk about giving glory to God in the highest is it starts with what people see. When people drive past your house on Christmas or during this Christmas time, what are they going to see? Are they going to see that you celebrate God who came down to save us from our sins or are they seeing Santa Claus and his reindeer and his elves or something like that? I think when we look at our Christmas decorations, it helps us think, think about and talk about our values. And so I want to spend a minute talking about our values. When we look at the angels in Luke chapter 2, if you have your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 2. Uh, in Luke chapter 2, we see what the angels value that first Christmas. We're going to read verses 10 and 11, and then throughout this the sermon, the message, we're going to say verse 14 together. Those are the words of all the multitude of angels, so I'll make sure that we point that out when we get there. But in Luke chapter 2... Starting at verse 10, it says, The angel said to them, the shepherds, Do not be afraid. I bring you the good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is, Messi- he is the Messiah, the Lord. And then together we'll say, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. We see the angels and they're saying, Hey, look. The Savior is born today for you. Glory to God in the highest. They are worshiping the God of all things. They're giving him glory in the highest. 
When we look at that first Christmas, we see what they value. They value God, being God, doing what God has promised to do, what he promised Adam and Eve. Uh, They value his plan of, of restoration, of renewal and redemption. And we also get a very basic definition of of worship. When we talk about worship today, I want you to think of it as giving glory to God in the highest, right? Those things are interchangeable. When we get a very basic definition of what that looks like, again, in verses 13, and we'll say 14 again together, it says, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying together, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. They give God praise, honor, and glory in the highest. And they give him the praise, honor, and glory because he has given us great gifts. And so I think when we talk about giving glory to God in the highest, when we talk about worship, it is those three things. It is giving him praise, honor, and glory. And that's very, very broad. Um, And when we really think about giving glory to God in the highest, when we think about worship, we often get it wrong, unfortunately. And I think the one of the, the first ways we get it wrong is we make it, we make giving glory to God in the highest a Sunday thing, something we do here and now, which is good, right? It's good that you're all here on Sunday. Thanks for being here. Thanks for those who are taking the time to watch it online. But worship is not just a Sunday thing. Giving glory to God in the highest is not supposed to be just a Sunday thing. It's supposed to be something that we do regularly, right? Uh, in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, his longest sermon, we're not going to read the whole thing, I promise, Uh, But in his Sermon on the Mount, he talks about values. He talks about values. Jesus says, are those on the screen, Evan? I think so. Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And when Jesus is talking about treasures, he's certainly talking about material possessions, right? Money, uh, jobs. In Jesus' time, he's talking about cattle. Some of you might be farmers and you may have cattle. They may, that, that might be a material possession you have. But for us today, it's probably money, uh, jobs, maybe your car, uh, maybe your house, uh, maybe uh, your boat. Or like being in North Wisconsin, people love snowmobiles, right? That's a big deal. UTVs, ATVs, things like that. Uh, But we can also think of treasures as simply being the things that we value. Again, like our jobs or social media uh, or time with family even. Good things are things that we value, education, uh, things of that nature. But unfortunately, what we value, what we treasure, often takes precedence above God. Often we put so much stock in, in the worldly things that are certainly good that they get in the way of our giving glory to God in the highest. And so again, when people drive past our house on Christmas, it may be something that we think, oh, it doesn't really matter if people look at my house and don't see Jesus. But I think it is a little bit important that people drive past our house and and maybe think of Christmas, certainly, but also think of, yeah, we give glory to God in the highest. Paul writes to the Colossians in Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, to be cautious in how we act toward outsiders, to be mindful of the witness that we are giving others in all things. And so when we talk about what we value, that's where we're giving glory to. And unfortunately, we don't always value giving glory to God in the highest the way that we should. Right? God tells us in the third commandment to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And for us, that means giving glory to God every day. Since Jesus came and died on the cross, rose again, we, we live in this new time where it's not just a Sabbath day set one day of the week. Worship shouldn't be a time where we just come and we check it off the box and that's the end. I like to think about it like, like fasting. Um, many of us know what fasting is when we give something up for a prolonged period uh, of time. A lot of times we do that during Lent and maybe you give up like chocolate or soda or social media or something like that. Um, but if we only spend time with God right here, right now, and we don't do it at all through the week, we're going on a six-day fast from God and his gifts. Now some of us um, are in a way group or maybe you spend time with God every day, and that's good. Maybe you go in your tree stand during hunting season. I didn't know, by the way, that hunting was such a big deal until I came here. I thought that was just a Wisconsin thing, so it's kind of neat to see that, that people still go hunting down here. Um, and spending time with God in those times is good, right? If you're in a way group, 
Let's say, hypothetically, you come here on Sunday, you give glory to God in the highest, and then you have a way group that meets on Wednesday, but you don't spend time with God on Tuesday or, or uh, Monday. That's a two-day fast. And then on the back end of that, that's, what, a three-day fast. Um, if you spend time with God every day, that's, that's good. But then we get into the nitty-gritty of God's law where we're called to do it all the time. And I, I, can, I was talking with a friend at, at school yes, uh, the other day on, on Friday, and I was like, man, yeah, when I'm in the car, that is not a time that I give glory to God. <laughs> I am angry a lot <laughs> in the car, right? And that's not what God wants. God wants all of us, our whole heart. And unfortunately, we make worship a time where it's just this right here. And that's not what God wants. We wouldn't fast from food and water for six days, certainly, or even just a few days entirely. Worship is not just a Sunday thing. And worship also isn't a place. This is something we do, I think, subconsciously. Is worship, we make a place, we give glory to God in the highest, and it's a time where we escape everything that's not in these walls. The world out there, right? Um, we all have baggage in life, right? We have struggles and stresses um, and issues and anxieties, and certainly we all have sins. And there are times, and I do this too, where I pull into the parking lot on Sunday and I take a deep breath and I say, all right, now I can go and worship and all that stuff is going to stay right here. Or I get into the lobby and I do the same thing. Or I leave it right at the edge of the door uh, as we come in. And that is not what worship is. Worship is not a place where we escape the world. It's a place where we bring the world to God and we say, please help me. Please help us. Worship is a place where we bring our struggles to God and we let him do what God does, right? Or at least that's what it's supposed to be. And unfortunately, we don't always do that. That first Christmas, the angels don't come and they, they don't say to the shepherds, hey, uh, the Savior is born, Awesome, good times, but you guys just stay here. Worry about your sheep. Oh, by the way, there's a wolf in the horizon. He's going to come and he's going to eat all your sheep, right? No, they don't, they don't say that. They say again in verse, verses 11 and 12, um, they say, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. And when the, she- when the angels say that to the shepherds, they are implying that the shepherds need to go. When they say, this will be a sign to you, they're saying, go. Go and see the Savior who has been born, who has been promised to them for up until that time, like probably around 2,000 years since the time of Adam and Eve. Go and see. He's here. Take your stuff to him. Um, I've heard it a few, multiple times over the course of my life during the Christmas season where we think of the shepherds being told this and then they just like leave all their sheep and they go, Right? And I think that it might be cooler if they bring all their sheep with them, right? What a pain <laughs> that would have to be to bring all these sheep that don't listen to Jesus, to have to bring all their struggles to Jesus. And that's what we're called to do when we come to worship, is we are called to bring our issues, our struggles, our sins to God and let God work. And ultimately, we get worship wrong when we make worship about us. Worship is not, unfortunately, about us. It's not about our, our style or our preference on, on how we worship. It's not about how loud we sing or how quiet we sing or about what we do with our hands or what we don't do with our hands. It's not about sitting or kneeling or standing. Uh, it's about God. And doing those things, by the way, is not bad, right? Raising your hands, singing loud, singing quietly, crossing your arms, putting them down, right? Sitting down, that's not bad. It becomes bad when we... Make those things what worship is all about. Worship is not about us. When we make worship about us, we are practicing what's called works righteousness, where we think we have some role to play in our forgiveness. But that's not true, right? When we we have that mentality, I like to think of it as a ladder. I wasn't going to ask Pastor John to bring a ladder in here, um, because then I would be tempted to climb it, and that would be dangerous. (laughs) But um, we... We like to think that we can climb the ladder to heaven to God, but we can't because we have all this baggage that just weighs us down. And that's thankfully where we are reminded on that first Christmas that God came down, that today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. Thankfully, God came down. We cannot ascend to God. We will only come crashing down. And sometimes we come to worship and we think that If we pray enough or if we sing enough, 
then God will do something for me. We kind of make God into a bucket to fill, and if I do enough, the bucket will be filled, and then God will do something. And that's not, that's not how God works, right? God does things for us because he's good, because he loves us. God always is working in our hearts and in our lives, and there's the opposite side of things where maybe we have a, a preference, and we think if we don't do things a certain way, then worship is not valid. Maybe if we don't sing the song that I like. Or there are some in, in our church body that think if you don't use the same words every week, then worship's not valid. And that's not true. God is praised whether we like it or not. I love, uh, we're going to fast forward in Jesus' life for just a second, to Luke chapter 19, Palm Sunday. And on Palm Sunday, uh, Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, and people are screaming to him, Hosanna, Hosanna, come, King, come, Lord, and save us. And the Pharisees have a hard time with that because they understand the Romans are not going to like this. And so they say, some of the Pharisees say, um, in Luke 19, 39, they say, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Tell your disciples to be quiet. You're going to get us all killed. And I love Jesus' response. I think it reminds us of our place in worship where Jesus says in the very next verse, I tell you, if they keep quiet the stones will cry out. I think that that is a wonderful, a wonderful thing Jesus says that reminds us of our place in worship. Certainly we come and we give him praise, honor, and glory. We bring him our baggage and we sing praises to him. We sing wonderful songs. Um, but it's not about us. God will be praised whether we like it or not. <laughs> and sometimes we don't want God to be praised when bad things are happening, when we're going through struggles in life. But God will always be praised because he is God. When we make worship about us, we forget our place. We forget that God is God. We're not. But thankfully, worship is all about God. And specifically, it's about Jesus, right? I love the vision of this church. It's so simple. Be with Jesus and be like Jesus. Because it's all about Jesus, right? That first Christmas, the angels come And they say once again in verse 11, you've heard this three times now, and we're about to say verse 14 for the third time. They say, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah of the Lord. And then we'll say verse 14 together again. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels come that Christmas, they announce that the Savior has been born for the shepherds and for us. They announce that God has come down and that God now deserves praise, honor, and glory because he has come down. Worship is all about Jesus. Giving glory to God is all about God because he has come down to save us. And so when we give glory to God in the highest, when we come and we gather during this time, when you gather in your way group, when you read your Bible on your own, it's all about Jesus and it's where we only receive. We don't leave our baggage in the parking lot. We bring it in here, and we say, Lord, please do something. Please help me. Please forgive me all my sins. And God says, yes, I'll do that. I would love to do that, right? Because God came down. And I think that that is one very important way that we give him praise, honor, and glory is when we bring our baggage to him, and we say, Lord, please help me. We are acknowledging our place that that we cannot do any of those things on our own. And it's giving him, it's putting him in the place that he has earned, that he has deserved, God alone has saved you from your sins, and he's done that for you and for me. One of my favorite uh, Christian singers is a guy named Judah Akers, and he is the, like, the front man, if they still use that term anymore, anyways, the front man of a, a regular secular band called Judah and the Lion. Has anyone heard of that band before, Judah and the Lion? A few of you? Oh, that's awesome. I thought that no one would have heard of it, right? Um, and I wouldn't, I'm not surprised that most of you haven't, all right? Um, But he also sings uh, Christian songs under just the name Judah, and I think that they're really beautiful. And one of his songs is titled, You've Done the Rest, and uh, the main point of the song is this, and he writes this, he says, Your cross, my confidence, your death, my plea, your resurrection, my cry of victory, you've thought of everything, there's nothing left, all I do is come you've done the rest. When we gather during this time of worship, when we read our Bibles on our own, when we do the the Advent devotion book that we have out here, 
Um, when we join together as a, a way group, all we do is come and receive the gifts that God has freely given us. All we do is receive the forgiveness that was won for us on the cross and on Easter morning. Because God has done all the work. The very birth of Jesus, this is a quote from, from one of my friends. All right, um, He's not always the smartest, but I thought this was good. Uh, <laughs> He said, the very birth of Jesus is the cosmic moment where the divine word became human creature and the fullness of God's love of God's action was proven for you and for me. And when we think about the shepherds, uh, I I like to think about our nativity scene. And I looked at the nativity scene out there. There's only one little shepherd, but that's okay. But if you have a nativity scene at home, what are the shepherds doing in your nativity scene? They're just standing there, right? Hello, baby, right? And I think that that is a wonderful reminder for us of our place. Is we come to Jesus and we say, please take care of this. All we do is come and we bring him our baggage and God takes care of it for you and for me. Worship is all about what God has done for us. And so worship is also where we give him the praise, honor, and glory that that maybe we stereotypically think of when we sing these wonderful songs, when we pray to him, when we give him thanks. All of that is good, and that is the secondary part of worship, of giving him glory in the highest. Is Yes, saying out loud, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for doing all of the work for me, for giving me the love and forgiveness that I need, for taking care of my baggage. After after receiving forgiveness, it is natural to give God praise, honor, and glory. And so when we praise and worship God, we bring him our baggage, we pray and sing to him, we hear his word and we celebrate together and we receive and then we give him the only thing we can, which is a thank you, <laughs> right? Uh, and I propose that we do this in three ways. We're doing it right now as one, right? We do this as a community of people. And we do this on Sunday morning. Some people like to call this corporate worship. I think maybe community worship is better because we're a community. We gather, we talk together, we eat donuts together. We sing praises together. Uh, We did this on Wednesday at Community Christmas where we gathered together and we sang. I thought that was so cool, by the way, that we sang Christmas songs uh, at a community event like that. Man, and like, like Christmas songs that glorify God. I thought that was so cool. We do this as a community when we gather together and we receive his gifts and we give him praise. Um, And we do that in this room, but we also do that in groups. If you're in a way group, you are in a community that gives God praise, honor, and glory in the highest. Uh, We also do this, or should be doing this, as families, right? Uh, Reading our Bibles together, praying to Him, uh, singing songs, listening to songs. Maybe your family's not a singing family, uh, and that's okay. But listening to Christian songs, those are things that we should be doing as a family. That's the second group that we give God praise, honor, and glory in. If you need Maybe you need help with that. Like I was, a, as Pastor John said, I, I worked in a church and I worked with families for a long time, for six years. And I had families that were like, we have no idea. Like you, you stand here and you tell us to be in the word and we don't know how to do that. Um, that's okay. M- not many people have flexed those muscles of, of that. And you can talk to Kaylee. You can talk to Pastor John, myself, John Bartels. And we would love to point you to resources um, or help you navigate that together. Because that is a, an awesome time as a family to give God the praise, honor, and glory, to give him the glory that he deserves as the God who gives us good gifts. And then the last kind of group that we give God praise, honor, and glory is as an individual. Right? We should be in our word, in his word, daily. We should be praying to him daily. We should be, maybe, maybe again, you're not a big singer, but you can listen to wonderful Christian music uh, daily. I force myself during Christmas time to listen to Christmas music because I need to remind myself to be merry and bright and like to smile every now and then during Christmas. Um, and it's literally like usually one song. I just turn on the Spotify playlist and like Nat King Cole comes on. I listen to it. And it's like, all right, I'm done now, right? <laughs> um, now, we shouldn't do that. That shouldn't be our mentality when we listen to Christian music. But it can be waking up in the morning, reading our Bible and hearing a wonderful Christian song and praying to God, and giving Him glory in the highest. And finally, when we think of worship in this time and in this space, it is certainly a time where we come, and we bring our baggage to God, and we receive His forgiveness. But then, after receiving His forgiveness, we are sent. We are sent to go and share the good gifts of God with others. 
Um, that first Christmas, the angels come, and they tell the shepherds, this will be assigned to you in, in verse 12, and the shepherds go, right? And I, I think reading verses 15 through 18 is really important, where it says, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hear the good news, and they go, and they want to see. They want to see this good news. So they hurry off, and they find Mary and Joseph with the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. That first Christmas, the shepherds, the angels, announced forgiveness to other people. The angels to the shepherds, they go, they see, they receive. And then they go and they share with others, and others are amazed. They're led to Jesus. And that is what we are sent to do here. We gather, we bring God our, our baggage, we receive, and then we're sent. We are called to, as the kids did so beautifully this morning, sh- scream out, go and tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born, right? We are sent from here to go and give the good news of Jesus to others. We, it should be natural for us after receiving God's gifts, to say what the angels say, and we're going to say these words together one last time. There they are. (laughs) We're going to say this one more time. It should be natural for us after receiving his gifts, which are for you, to say glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Jesus has come, and he's coming back someday. He's redeemed you. He's taken all your baggage And he's giving you rest and reprieve and forgiveness. And he's sending you to be his messenger. He's sending you to give him praise, honor, and glory with all people. Uh, At this time, I'm going to invite Stuart up and we're going to pray together. Let's pray. Lord of all, we we thank you. We praise you. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. And we, we thank you for bringing us here to receive your gifts. We thank you for being the God who who deserves to be worshipped. For being the God who has redeemed us, who has taken our our issues, our struggles, our baggage away. And we pray that you remind us in a season that can be very busy and very stressful that you are the Lord, that you are the Lord of all things. And we pray that you help us to daily take times to give you praise, honor, and glory, which you deserve. We pray that you remind us that we receive from you. And we pray that you send us from here, having received your goodness, your forgiveness, to go and live new lives, inviting and encouraging others to come and see what you have done and what you continue to do. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strains Gloria, Gloria In excelsis Deo In excelsis Deo Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song?
Him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee. Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, in excelsis Amen. Good morning. My name is Greg Cole. I'm on the Business Advisory Council here. Uh, just so you know, guys know, this is going to be a big letdown after that. Well done, Stuart. I appreciate it. Um, so make sure you... Uh, in my opinion, I'm going to go on Google later on and give Blake a five-star review. I thought he did an excellent job. So <clears throat> make, sure you, make sure you tell him as, as he goes out. Uh, one thing uh, I 